Thank you. Please be seated. Now today we are kicking off a four-week series entitled Sweet Like Honey. And our primary uh, text for the next four weeks is that verse that Carol read for us. And pri primarily the text that says, Your word is sweet like honey. Sweet like honey. Hence our decorations for uh, our communion table, uh, a variety of honeys and uh, the bees and the hives and all of that goodness. So I want to start out by this four weeks we'll be covering uh, the promises of God. And this week we start out with the promise of rest. But I want you to hear me when I say that the promises of God endure forever. Can I get an amen? amen? The promises of God endure forever. Like once he puts it out there, he doesn't take it back. And as I was preparing for this series, I found it to be really interesting that honey does not go bad. Did anybody know that? That there, there is no expiration date on, on honey. Now, I had somebody in the earlier service say, yeah, I know that. I have a jar that's three years old and it's still good. Yeah. Well, here's a little known fact. The oldest honey in the world found to be in existence is about 3,000 years old. It was discovered in an Egyptian tomb, still sealed. And they brought it out, and now I don't know who drew the short straw to see, <laughs> to test it, but it was still as fresh as honey just picked from the comb that day. That's amazing, isn't it? I think, oh my goodness, who would have thought? Of course he would have, right? He designed it. But that is, that is who we are talking about. The creator of heaven and earth, the stars above, the fish below, everything that you see, everything that we enjoy, the, the, the range of beauty from a mountain top to a glacial bay to, to the falls, uh, to the leaves that turn in the fall, to the new life that comes in the spring. That is our God. And in his intelligent, creative, powerful design, he created something sweet like honey that endures forever. And so does his word. So today we're going to focus in on the promises of rest. The promise of rest. I kind of opened that up about our creator God, right? You remember the beginning of uh, the Bible, the opening story? Six days he created everything. And on the seventh day he rested, right? By design, he has created us for a day of rest. Now, I didn't really understand that concept until the pandemic. Everybody remembered that, right? But think about it from this perspective. I don't know if you were watching the news, of course there was much else to do, right? But uh, early on in the pandemic, about six months in, uh, I remember a broadcast where they had showed a satellite uh, photograph of China before the pandemic hit. Tell it was land because it was covered by smog. Within six months of the pandemic, you could see all of China. streams rest, and it was healing itself. Rest so that we renew our bodies and minds and spirits. Rest. And as I mentioned, I really found that out in the, in the pandemic because what I found myself doing because more work I had done prior to the pandemic. Because 
finding myself angry and bitter and tired and, and thinking, gosh, I wish we could just go back in time because it was easier, right? And then God kind of tapped me on the shoulder and slapped me upside the head and said, you need rest. And I started to take rest. I started to take better care of myself. And now I am in a rhythm where on Mondays, Mondays is my, are my Sabbath. Now the only conflict on a Monday that I might come across is when my wife says, um, see this to-do list? <laughs> Honey, it's my Sabbath. Not mine, she says. I'm teasing, I love you, honey. But can we shorten the list? Just, just saying. Rest. So, a couple observations from our text. Just a, three simple verses, and we've got three simple observations I, I'd like to point out. First observation is that rest requires that we come to the Father. We, we in other words, we have to take time to come and rest. We have to be intentional about it. You know, my, my wife and I, we often uh, dream of different types of vac vacations. And I learned a long time ago that we need to put it on the calendar because if we don't put it on the calendar, the dream never becomes a reality. And so I, what I mean by that is we have to be intentional and put it on our calendars to take a day of rest or to take a vacation, or to take that time to be in the presence of God for the renewal that he offers. Second one, rest requires us to take on his yoke. You know what I'm saying? His yoke. Now, modern day technology affords us the ability to have John Deere tractors and all that good stuff. So the days of yokes are pretty much gone, unless you go to Amish country. So the days of biblical times, it would have been common for a farmer to partner with a neighbor and say, hey, let's bring our two oxen together because two are more powerful than one. And so they would put a yoke, a wooden yoke on them, connecting them so their stride would be together and in unison so they could direct them where to go instead of one wanting to wander off this way or that way and what Jesus is saying by this come and put my lay my yoke upon you he's saying my way will lead you in a way of restoration and wholeness and goodness for the glory of God amen and then third one, now I, I, I will say this right now, I, I did shorten my uh, sermon today uh, because I know we have a baptism. I thought that would have gotten an amen. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Usually Francis gives me an amen. There, there she is, hi Francis. Um, I'm just teasing. But fi the final point being that rest requires that we learn from the teacher. Is it right there in the text? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was in high school, I wasn't a model student. Uh, a matter of fact, out of 117 in our graduating class, I graduated 113. And number one is the best, you know, the highest, right? I'm just, just so you know the range. And, and, and I truly believe they, they graduated me because they didn't want me to come back. But all that to say is there was one teacher in all my high school that I still remember because he made a positive impact on my life. It was the only class in all my four years of high school that I got an A in. Now, some of that may have to do with the fact that he was also the head football coach, right? He had a way about him that would, that would gather your attention. 
but it was an earth science class that he taught that I paid attention to and I learned. And Jesus invites us as we take on his yoke to always be in a mode of learning. Now I'm just here to say, if you have a pulse, if you can take a breath, I don't care if you're young or mature, there's learning that can be, be done. Amen? Amen? God always has something new for us to learn. But it all gets back to us taking the initiative and coming before him, taking on that yoke, embracing the rest and the teaching that he has for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this wisdom found in these three short verses. We would pray that we would be able to have the ability to embrace your message, to be diligent about taking time for rest, for the sake of renewal, refreshment, to be able to learn something new at the feet of the Master. In Jesus' name, amen.